Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. Today I'm going to be painting Jelson Darrock from Warhammer Quest Cursed City. And as with all of my other Warhammer Quest Cursed City painting videos, as much as possible I am going to be using just Army Painter speed paints. Jelson Darrock is my favourite character in the game, also probably my favourite miniature. So I have saved him for last and I am really looking forward to doing this. To get started I have spray undercoated him with Army Painter Matte White and when that is completely dry we are ready to get started. And the first thing I'm going to do is something I have done with many of the other miniatures in this series. I am getting some lead belcher, I'm thinning it down quite a bit and I'm going to apply this to all of the metal areas on the miniature. So that's going to be the head of his mallet, he's got some buckles and things on his belts, there is a little insignia on his hat. There is elements of his sword which have metal on, several areas of the gun, obviously the barrel of the gun itself and then also the firing mechanism, and then he has some greaves as well. There really are quite a lot of little metal areas on this, for example there are metal corners on his satchel on his back and then he has lots of tiny little buckles. So it's worth taking a moment to look over the miniature carefully, make sure you aren't missing any of them. And you may find you need two coats of metal paint for this, but I'm just going to do one. With that done, we're going to start with the Army Painter Speed Paints and we're going to use Crusader Skin. There is very, very little skin visible on this miniature, it's just the face, and even the face is hidden under that huge hat. I'm going to apply just a small amount of Crusader Skin. Later on, I will go back and apply a second coat because I wasn't happy there was enough recess shading on the face. But for now, it's just a thin coat. Then I'm switching to Grim Black and we're going to apply this all over the legs and we're also going to apply it over the greaves and the boots. You could do these different colours, you could do the trousers, the greaves and the boots all different colours, but it's quite convenient to use the one colour over this whole section, gets things done a little bit quicker. I'm also going to use the Grim Black to dot in the eye, but I do that a little bit later on. Next I'm switching to Gravelord Grey, and the Gravelord Grey is going to go over all of the belts and buckles on this miniature. Normally I would be tempted to do things like belts with a brown instead, but there's going to be a lot of brown on this miniature anyway because of the hat and the long coat. So we're doing the Gravelord Grey instead, which still looks really nice, it gives a nice leathery look. But in addition to all of those belts and buckles, we will also apply Gravelord Grey to some of the metal areas as well. Not all of the metal areas, some of the metal areas will be a different metallic tone, but for the head of the hammer and also all of the areas of metal on the gun, Gravelord Grey is a good choice. And there's some really nice fine detailing on the metal firing mechanisms on the gun, which really does pop out once you add the Gravelord Grey to it. It looks really nice, with very little effort. One of the other things I'm going to do with the Gravelord Grey is very, very carefully paint over the eye patch. You have to look quite carefully to see that Jelson even has an eye patch, but very carefully going in there and painting that in. And then also he has like these little loop holster things that he is putting his stakes in. They will get Gravelord Grey too. Again, a lot of these loops and things I might have done in brown on another miniature, but there will be a lot of brown added to this miniature later on, and having these areas of black and grey will help to break that up. And speaking of brown, now we are moving on to hardened leather. This is one of my favourite colours from the Speed Paints range, and I think it always looks really nice. I'm going to apply it all over the long trench coat and the hat. It's also going to go over some of the other metallic areas that haven't been done with Gravelord Grey, like the shoulder pads. And I think this is possibly the largest area on a miniature that I have painted with hardened leather. And while I do think it looks really good, it does look like leather, I think perhaps it might be just a bit too much on this miniature. There's such a large area of leather with the coat and the hat, it's probably just a little bit too orange and I think if I was to go back and do this miniature again, I would be tempted to tone down the oranginess of the leather, make it a little bit darker, a little bit more brown. Overall, I do still really like it and it does really look like leather, I think it's a fantastic colour for that, but having such a large amount of it on the miniature is perhaps a little bit too much. On the plus side, that orangey brightness of the leather does help some of the other details to pop out, like the buckles on the belt, like the stakes and the detailing on the gun. 
Next I want to paint the inside of the coat and to do this I'm going to use blood red mixed with the hardened leather. It's going to be two parts blood red, one part hardened leather and I'm trying to get a sort of rich scarlet colour. I don't know why but I think of Jelson Darrick as being a character who has seen too much and when I think of characters who have seen too much I think of Will Scarlet from Robin of Sherwood, one of my favourite TV shows and then I think of the song from Clannad, Scarlet Inside and therefore inside of the jacket gets scarlet. That's the kind of thing that my brain does sometimes when I'm painting. And of course, having that red inside, it hints at that dark nature. He is a hunter of the creatures of the night. And also it helps to break up all those darker colors, all those browns and blacks. Painting the inside of the jacket with the same leather color as the outside of the jacket really would have been too much. And now we are going to paint some other leather areas on the miniature and we are going to use blood red mixed with dark wood. It's going to be two parts dark wood, one part blood red. And we're trying to get here a nice burgundy colour, a nice rich brown red. Something that hints at blood. And the main reason I want it to hint at blood is because although I am applying it to the hat, I have mainly mixed this colour for his gauntlets. I want him to have these dark, rich burgundy gauntlets to insinuate he does have blood on his hands. I'm sure he has done some terrible things in his life, probably some things that haunt him, some things he may regret. So I think a nice, rich, bloody look to the gauntlets works with that idea. And once again, it also helps to break up all of that orangey leather and all of the greys. And the final thing I'm going to do with this burgundy colour is I'm going to paint the satchel on his back. And there's no real reason for doing it in this colour other than it's going to stand out against the orangey leather we've already painted. Just helping to mix up the colours on the miniature without straying too far from that theme of leather and browns. And I do happen to think this reddish brown colour does look really good on the satchel. It really helps to pull out those details on all the buckles. Next I'm doing a one-to-one -one mix of hardened leather with orc skin and this is for the little satchel on the front of his belt. No grand scheme behind this, I just wanted a pop of colour on the miniature, something that was a little bit different to what I already had and then I just wanted to tone down the orc skin which is quite a bright vibrant green. And then we are moving to dark wood and we're going to use dark wood on all of the other wood areas so that's the handle of the mallet, also the hilt of the sword and then all of the wooden parts of his rifle. Finally we're going to paint the stakes with dark wood and the idea here is we want the stakes to look like they have been sharpened recently and they have revealed a whiter wood beneath the darker exterior. And the way we're going to achieve that is we're going to start with the top parts of the stakes, the parts that haven't been sharpened, and we're just going to apply the dark wood straight over that area. And then when we get towards the sharpened areas, we're going to apply some dark wood and then we're going to wet our brush and we're going to start blending and thinning it out as we move towards the tips. What we want to do is we want to move from the dark wood colour through a lighter wood colour, moving out to almost a white at the points of the stakes. And this is really something you just have to experiment with, keep practicing, playing around with the amounts of water you're using, sometimes going back and putting a little bit more paint on, sometimes wiping some of it off. The good thing about Army Painter Speed Paints is they're quite forgiving. If you really don't like what you've done, you can just wet your brush and wipe off most of the paint you've just applied and start again. And after tinkering with it for a little while, this is what I have. Don't forget there is a stake loaded into his rifle in addition to the six he has on his belt. Moving on, we're going back to Gravelord Grey. We're going to use this on the small amount of hair that you can see under his hat. We're also going to use it on the sheath of the sword. We're going to use it on the little insignia on his hat, being very careful not to overspill too much on all of the brands we've already painted. And then of course, we are going to use it on the scenic element on his base. He's standing on a piece of cracked rock. So just slop a bit of Gravelord Grey over that as well. And with that done, we are finished with the Army Painter Speed Paints. But I have to admit, at this point, I started to do what I call faffing about. I really like Jelson Darrick, and I guess things that I would normally leave as finished on other miniatures, I wasn't quite happy to leave on this miniature. So there were a few things I did. First of all, I layered some Mephiston Red over the scarlet colour inside the jacket. 
and this was really just to add some additional highlighting and to smooth out the red it wasn't quite as smooth as I wanted it to be and then once that was completely dry I applied Agrax Earthshade and that was to dull it back down again and to try and get that dark burgundy colour. I also applied Agrax Earthshade to his gloves. Again, that was to level out the coloration where it was a little bit uneven and also just to darken it down a little bit, just to make it a little bit browner than it was so it didn't just look like he was wearing comical red clown gloves. I then did a few other little details. I lined in around the stakes using the Grim Black from the Army Painter Speed Paints range and then I used a thin down Celestra Grey from Citadel to highlight all of the belts. The final thing I did was get some Crusader skin and apply a second coat of that to his face just to help bring out the details but also to darken up the features a little bit more. And I didn't put a lot of this in the video because I really was faffing about with it. I'd sort of go back to the miniature, do a little bit of highlighting, leave it, think I was done, then come back and do a little bit more. But what you see on screen now is as good as it's going to get for Jelson Darek. I am leaving it here. I am calling this guy finished and in fact not just Jelson Darek I am calling the whole game finished I have now painted every miniature from the set so this is the final painting video for this series there will be one final video I'm going to show you the whole set painted up and I'm going to show you my storage solution for the miniatures as well but that is for another day until then thank you so much for watching if you have enjoyed the video please consider pressing the like button if you really enjoyed the video please consider subscribing if you don't already do so and hopefully I will see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.